What's up everybody? It's Kelsey Brianna J here with my most disappointing products of 2016. So, I guess I'll start with the usual boring disclaimer. I'm not bashing the brand. I love some things from the brands that I'm going to be talking about, but these products didn't make the list. All opinions are my own, blah, blah, blah. The products that made it onto this list, you know, I had super high expectations for them, and they just really let me down. I kind of feel like how Tyra Banks did that time when that girl made her really mad. <laughs> So with that being said, you can now understand my level of disappointment. So let's jump right into these products. I have a confession, it's been hours. Um, thank God I didn't take off my makeup or my clothes or my earrings or anything like that because I forgot to say that this is a collaboration between Puffin's wife and I. She would kill me if I didn't say it, especially since this video was her idea in the first place. <laughs> Oh, I don't have on my lipstick. Oh well. But when you're done watching my video, make sure you go check out hers. Now seriously, enjoy the video now. The very, very first product that disappointed me starting off in 2016, I was super, super excited from the promo pics. Everything sounded like it was aligning. It felt like this was going to be something I really, really loved, but I was so disappointed. The Kat Von D blushes, like everything lined up. These blushes sounded so cool. They even had cool names. Bonnie and Clyde, Mickey and Mallory, Piaf and Poe. I'm like, I need to have these blushes. The colors look perfect for my complexion. I'm like, yes, I've been wanting new blushes. These are gonna be my new go-to blushes. So I go to Sephora, they didn't have any testers out, so I bought them all blindly, bought them all. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get them. These are gonna be my new favorites. They're huge, they're split pants. They look really, really cool and enticing. Get them home, it's like, oh my God, did I get like the cardboard display ones? No, though, that was the formula. Mm -hmm. That was the formula. I was super, super disappointed, very, very let down. And apparently I'm not the only person who was super disappointed by these blushes because these blushes were pulled from the line and you now can find them in your local Marshalls slash TJ Maxx locations. So don't come for me for this, but um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say it. The Max Selena collection. Do not kill me. I know it's some Selena hyper fans out there. I love Selena. I was super, super hyped about this collection. Max started dropping hints about this collection a few years ago, so they've had years to work on this collection. Um, Selena fans went ham for them to actually make the collection, signing petitions, all kind of things. So when I saw the pieces from the collection, I was like, This is it. I mean, you know, as a collector, I bought some pieces and I have some things, but honestly, looking at the actual products, there's nothing that stands out over the other. There's nothing that I felt like I really just absolutely needed to have. But just overall, I wasn't wild with the collection. I felt like nothing was super, super popping like that. Like, especially if you look at the Mac Mariah Carey collection, which was one of the most popping collections of all time. You look at that and compare it to the Selena and it's like, did they really do Selena justice? Anything for Selena's. The third disappointment for me were the Touch and Soul Metalist Eye Duos. And I was disappointed because I was playing with these in Sephora and I swatched them individually. Now, when I applied it on my eyelid, I felt like I had the most old looking crepey eyelids that I've ever seen and my eyelids are pretty smooth. I mean, I have a few little jujubas, but uh, those, that product, like all of the colors, like I had like three of them, all of the colors made my eyelids super, super wrinkly looking and it was just very unattractive. I really wanted them to work just because I really am a fan of glitters and they had some really different color combinations and I thought that the product looked really cool, but you know, <laughs> one point I felt like a flake popped off of my eye and fell on my face. It just... It just was no bueno for me. So I was very let down by that, especially since other people were hyping it up. You know, sometimes you just are like, what are y'all, like, like, are y'all doing something differently than me? Like, why? 
you know, I'm just gonna leave that alone. The next thing, the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Concealer. So let's just go ahead and start off by saying that it smells like paint. If you guys watch my tutorials, you'll know that my eye area is very, very sensitive. So anytime I put something by there, my eyes are, you know, it's a high, high possibility that my eyes may water. And as soon as I opened it, it was like <laughs> more tears than when people were watching the Titanic. I feel like they literally left open jars of the concealer in the middle of the rainforest and literal raindrops acidic raindrops dropped into the concealer because that's how bad the actual formula was and what was crazy was like i liked the foundation but the concealer though no girl and it was only like four colors the next thing was the anastasia ultimate glow kit now i have a question for anastasia what happened because we were doing so good with the glow kits. Like we had the Moon Child Glow Kit, the Sweets Glow Kit, the That Glow Glow Kit. Um, a few, uh, it was two more glow kits that were really, really nice. The consistency was great. The highlighters were great. The price point was great. And then we get to the Ultimate Glow Kit. The highlighters were super, super chunky. Like the colors were just kind of just wrong. It was very, very grainy, glittery. One of the highlighters looked like they took sand from the beach and kind of compressed it and put it <laughs> and put it into the pan, put it into the pan and put it in the palette. I don't know. I don't know how that passed through inspection. I don't really expect that to happen again. Like I don't know what happened with that. But let's just hope that it never happens again because it was nobody's ultimate anything. The Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. That sounds like a bomb mascara. The name of that mascara sounds like it's going to make my eyelashes look like pieces of velvet floating off of my eyelid. Instead, it looks like dead spider legs hanging off of my eyelid like that mascara is very very clumpy and it doesn't lengthen anything so I'm stuck with the same length eyelashes but now but now I just pay to have them clump together and it's, it's it's black I will give it that it's not giving me volume it's not giving me length it's not giving me life like it was just a total no-go and so many people said they liked it and I'm like are we using the same mascara Sunday Riley title it smelled like a funeral was on my face. I did not like the very potent, pungent smell of this product. Every time I opened it, I had to go. <laughs> it was too strong. And on top of that, I felt like I was just rubbing in water on my face. I know it's a water-based cream. I know that. It felt like I could have just gone to the faucet splash some water on my face and was good to go. The Nude Beauty Blender. I don't know why everybody tried to act like this was the best thing since sliced bread, but it wasn't. And it was nude, but my makeup still turned it brown, so I don't know whose nude it was, but it wasn't my nude. Why they didn't have the idea to come out with a variation of nudes because my beauty blender was more dirty than any of my other beauty blenders. I don't like that one as much and it doesn't get as big as my other beauty blenders and it was just a simple pass for me. No. Bye. So the name of this product is so long that I can't memorize it. I need to read it off of the paper. The Burberry Number no. 2 Nude Gold Spring Slash Summer 2016 Runway Highlighting Palette. Why would you make such a long name for such an unimpressive product? I wanted that product to be so, so bomb, but it just wasn't. It was a gold and a white version of the same product, same design. When I got it, I was like, oh, this is going to be beautiful. I swatched it and it was no pigmentation. I was like, where's the pigmentation? Like, did they even put a drop of any color in here or did they just... Say, we're just gonna throw it out there because it's Burberry. And they're gonna think that they're getting something really good simply because the price tag is so massive. So let's do that. Let's see how fast this sells out because it's going to sell out. It did sell out. I had to hunt it down, got it, and was like, what the heck? Like, why did I even waste my time? So anybody who knows me knows how much I love NARS. And NARS came out with a new lip formula, the NARS Lip Glide Lip Formula. And 
I just knew that these were going to be amazing. So I went to Sephora like I normally do, casually walked up to them, started swashing them on my hands, and I was like, oh, this color is not pigmented. It must be a fluke. So I swatched the next color. Like, oh, maybe they just don't know how to do darks in this formula. So I went for the nude one. So then I swatched the new one, and I was like, what is this? Like, are they serious? So... I didn't buy any of those, but I just want to let you guys know that I was disappointed in it because I wanted to buy some. So these are all the products that simply disappointed me for 2016. I'm sure I will have another slew of products for 2017, but for now, tell me some of the products that you really, really had high anticipation for and when you got it, you were like, Wah, wah, wah. because I know that I'm not the only one so tell me down below if you haven't already please make sure that you subscribe before you leave and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and as always I will talk to you guys in my next video smooches bye